two aims. Firstly, it examines the importance of the place for the music of Terebet Garret, in short TK, a Finnish hardcore punk band formed in 1980. Secondly, the paper reflects the process by which the band evolved from an unfamiliar oddity to local heritage. Uh, Tervet Karet or TK was born into a straight laced country that had revoked the, the working permits of the Sex Pistols just two years earlier. In spite of hailing from the town of Torni, located in remote uh, Lapland, it reached in instantly a global audience. It was also a source of inspiration for more famous acts like Sepultura and Fate No More. While the band's numerous attempts to tour abroad failed in the 1980s for various reasons, its fan base was always uh, more international than domestic, extending from Japan to Brazil and the US. Before the breakup in 2015, the band was able to tour all these destinations. In 35 years, the line of the band uh, changed several times, while the Velimatti uh, Ayala, the singer of the band, was all the only permanent a permanent member. For this reason, TK has always been strongly associated with the frontman Laya, who has also explored other types of popular music, ranging from rockabilly to ambient and industrial noise. As a lyricist, Laya's self-expression channel through TK has differed considerably from his contemporaries, who have, who have encouraged people to fight the system. Although themes related to war and anarchy often ex is expressed as utopic or dystopic visions are found in TK's music, the rest is something completely different. To give an example, a song titled Mulon Lian Lyhyt Sanky in English, My Pet is Too Short, is a short but hyper-realistic description of uh, TK's guitarist's uh, living conditions. All the lyrics of the song are inco incorporated in the title. Still, TK is best known for his shadow masochistic fecal fantasies with original song titles like Rubber and Blood, Peace and Shit. This side of the band was epitomized in Ayrton Yolo EP released in 1982. It has eight songs fit into six minutes and five seconds. Moreover, the front cover sports a handcuffed pair male torso being hum hung upside down from the ceiling with a lit candle stuck in into his arms. The EP contains a song, Tornion Kevat, Springtime in Tornio, that accurately describes in eight words the local smellscape after a long winter characterized by darkness and sub-zero temperatures. Yet the town of Tornio, located on the southwestern fringes of Finnish Lapland, was essential as a place in the making of this band. In early 1980s, the zeitgeist of Finland was such that teenagers were, were commonly regarded as a trouble rather, rather than a precious future asset to be fostered with well-mediated resources like youth centers. Boredom was the word, and this feeling was best crystallized by another Finnish punk band, Razia, in their 1979 hit single, London Skidit, The Kids of London. From the perspective of Northern Finland, London was the place that had always many possibilities to offer. For the members of Tervet Karen, boredom was the primordial ooze, as they had nothing better to do than to practice their songs in the garage of, uh, of the Ayala residence. Cross-country skiing was not on an option. In spite of its, its remote location in the north, Tony was perhaps the best place in Finland to keep up with the international beat in music, comics, horror movies and hardcore porn, for it is the only border town to Sweden in the country. Never mind the bollocks by Sex Pistols was available in Haparanta, Tornio's twin city on the Swedish side, long before it was distributed in Finland. Radio Sweden was another important influence because popular music was broadcasted by Radio Finland only in, in a two-hour show with an apt name, Rock Radio, that was aired three weekday afternoons. On Swedish radio, Leia heard for the first time bands like Sex Pistols, Ramones, Suicide and Discharge. And the mental connection to the New York City through similar topographies was also important. These sources of uh, inspiration were mixed by Laya with his personal history. These included his experiences about the other side of humanity at the Keropudas Mental Asylum, where he did his alternative civilian service. But above all, Laya channeled successfully a state of mind defined as Northern Anxiety. Northern anxiety is said to stem from the harsh climate, 
characterized by dark and cold winters, and it's manifested in high suicide rates and widespread alcoholism in, uh, in Finnish Lapland. Lestadianism, the omnipresent conservative Lutheran revival movement in Tornio River Valley, that is considered oppressive by no, most non-believers, is just another expression of it. Even the echoes of the Second World War that ended in Finnish Lapland with a total devastation as the retreating German groups practiced scorched earth tactics and left behind many mentally fragile Finnish veterans can be heard in the resulting mix of TK's music, which is undeniably barbarous but also unique and strangely appealing. Uh, let me see if I can play the sound. <coughs> Uh, now, as we have better understanding of TK and its influences, it's time to dwell into the second theme of, of the presentation. Here the aim is to chart and interpret that, uh, the process whereby the band was turned from an oddity to local heritage. Although it's possible to, possible to claim that the process of heritageization had started earlier, the first tangible manifestation took place in November 2013 when the band was unearthed with a statue that was raised in Tornio. The idea about the statue had first been spelled out in 2009 in a Facebook group named Tornio should raise a Tervetkaret statue, and it got substantial public attention. The result is a steel-framed glass obelisk named Särkynyt Lyhty, Broken Lantern, designed by Tuija and Pekka Isorättyä. In official agenda, it was raised for the remembrance of notable underground influences hailing from the Tornio area. Besides TK, this meant a mythical late 19th century figure known as the priest of Kalkima. This man, named Pietari Apo Herajärvi, was a village idiot famous for his poems and songs mocking the local authorities. Nonetheless, the statue is commonly known as Tervet Kadet statue, and it's also with this name it's found in Google Maps. The content related to the band is limited to its first, first album cover reproduced on the southeastern side of the obelisk, while the priest of Akankima occupies the opposite side. The remaining two sides are embellished with local material culture. Uh, as a monument located in a public park, Broken Lantern Obelisk is the only freely accessible place to which people can allo allocate their memories regarding the band. In winter time, this nine meter high monument is illuminated from inside and forms therefore a clearly visible land landmark in all encompassing Arctic twilight. From theoretical viewpoint, the obelisk represents a conceptual compromise in a country where statues are seldom, if ever raised to honor living persons or entities. Therefore, the priest of Kalkima is an essential component of the monument that is needed to support built up a narrative about the tradition of eccentric people hailing from the Tornio area. Laja was at first uh, uh, satisfied because of this acknowledgement. And this statement rephrases the common saying, no one is a prophet in their own land. It also shows the wounds caused by the indifference or straightforward content of local authorities in 1980s. The next step was in the process of heritageization was taken in May 2015, when the renovated Museum of Tornio Valley opened up a permanent exhibition containing a section reserved for the display of local popular music. This part of the exhibition is a confined space within the museum and it resembles a temporary hut constructed from corrugated iron. A neon sign spelling out rock, rock, rock is about the entrance that is flanked by a peace sign and the circle A. Most items displayed uh, inside, mainly posters and photographs, pertain to TK. An interview with Laia Ranson Loop in the only video monitor, but the band's music is blasted out from headphones in a small listening area. <laughs> a remarkable feature is the total absence of interpretative texts that would convey a mediated message or alternatively present a historical narrative 
on the development of popular music in the Western world, most Finnish Lapland. Without them, the patron is left to interpret uh, the visual and auditory offerings the best possible way he or she can. Three explanations can be offered for this. Firstly, it's quite possible that the museum staff was forced uh, to incorporate a section on local popular music to the renewed permanent exhibition to the external pressures, while its functionaries might, might have not had real interest or vision to de develop it. Thus, the se section came into existence as a random collection of memorabilia with no content or message. Alternatively, this subsection can be interpreted as a fine example of multivocality and do-it-yourself spirit. The patron has now a true possibility to use the small display in a way that best corresponds with the, with the motivations of the visit. The most likely option is, however, that the out, outcome is a lucky coincidence in which the latter results from the former, and this result can be interpreted as an exemplary case of punk attitude. In the exhibition, this is hinted by the stack of post-it notes that the visitors can, uh, can use to put up their own conception about the music of Terve Karet for the others to see. In December 2017, just as Finland celebrated its 100th uh, year of independence, Laja Eila won the public vote arranged by regional newspaper Lapin Kansa for the greatest Laplander of the century. This was a powerful demonstration of machination and networking, as his victory was, was based on votes, votes cast it outside from the administrative region of Lapland. This detail was strongly underscored by Lapinkasa newspaper, thus indicating its own uneasiness with the outcome. The online discussion board of Lapinkasa was unsurprisingly filled with opinions calling for a revolt. However, the most intriguing re reaction to the title is displayed at the Museum of uh, Tornio Valley. Now a visitor entering the section of popular music is faced with a gilded picture frame carrying a portrait of a young prince. The picture is painted over with the circle A and it carries a newspaper clip announcing the win and the text, the king, Leia the first. The message of this collage is rather sarcastic while it possibly anticipates the future stages in the heritage cessation of a TK. One of them was reached in September 2018 when Laya's biography, written by the second author of this contribution, was published to honor his 60th birthday. Finally, I would like to conclude my presentation with some remarks regarding the process of consecration of punk hardcore era heritage. As previously shown by the case of Sex Pistols and the graffiti found at 6 Denmark Street in London, the feelings of this matter are strongly polarized. The public opinion has been generally on the negative side. In Tornio, many were actually unfamiliar with the global importance of the TK or even about the existence of the band. Such individuals apparently occupied decisive places in the process of authorized uh, heritage discourse, as there's a rumor that the culture committee of Tornio had no idea, had no idea who Laya or Tervet Kedet was by the time their commemoration with the statue was proposed to this governing body. This returns us back to square one. When reviewing who the proponents of punk hardcore heritage Jason are, I normally see balding gentlemen in their 50s or 60s. There's at least two in this crowd. They were young lads by the time the things they now push forward as important heritage took place. Therefore, I would argue that the so-called punk heritage is also, and perhaps largely, about sense-making of the own experience past at the present. In the end, it's all about, about the very old cliché. Every generation writes its own history and determines its own heritage. The paper I'm about to finish right now, here at Tak Diva, certainly qualifies as a manifestation of this intent. For the past 15 minutes, I have been trying to convince you that the Finnish band I've heard, first heard sometime in the early 80s would be somewhat more meaningful than your, audi your, than your own auditory life histories. In reality, I have just played out my darkest fantasies. I have shown the album cover of Infinite Christmas 
and played TK's prison sheet to an audience consisting of highly distinguished academics. <laughs> to quote one Mr. John Lydon, ever get the feeling you have been cheated? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.